Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be covering on how you can obtain the new four-star craftable weapons in Inazuma. So if you guys have been curious on how to obtain that, this is what this video will be about. Now, quick disclaimer, this might contain some spoilers on how to solve puzzles and whatnot. So if that's not what you're interested in, that's your warning. But we're gonna be talking about on how to obtain the new four-star one-handed sword, the new four-star craftable catalyst, the new four-star spear, as you can see, and the new four-star greatsword. Now, I do not have the four-star bow as the time of me recording this. However, I do know how to unlock it, and it takes a little bit of time. I think it takes about a week or something. So, we're going to be covering on all the ways that you can obtain these new craftable weapons in Inazuma from the 2.0 update. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable, informative, anything like that, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, consider subscribing as well if you want to catch more videos like this in the future. That being said, let's hop right in. Okay, so starting with number one, the four-star craftable bow... Um, if you head over to Kanazuka Island, north of Kanazuka Island, right up here, you will find a guy named Takashi. Now, what Takashi wants is for you to go around this area searching for mysterious conch uh, shells that you can find just like in a little investigation spot like so. I think this might be one. Oh, nope. Electro crystal fly. But you're going to be going for these mysterious conch shells. You need at least three of them. You go up to Takashi once per day. Give him three of these shells and he will allow you to pick any of these chests behind him. Try your luck to try any of the rewards that you'll get. I think this is scripted and you'll get some pretty bad stuff like iron chunks, apples, and sedias, etc. But if you keep doing this every single day, after seven days apparently, you will end up getting the blueprint or the craftable bow. I haven't gotten mine yet. I, I think I still need to do it for two or three more days and I should be good. But this is apparently the way that you get the four star craftable bow in Genshin Impact for Inazuma. Okay, now that we got one of the easiest blueprints out of the way, let's move on to the second one. This will be for the four star Claymore in the game. You have to initiate a quest first, I believe, for the Makage Furnace, which takes you over to the Kujo Camp or encampment. I could be wrong about this, but I believe it'll proc a quest where you have to talk to this guard and then talk to a shrine maiden over here who goes by the name of Miyuki. After doing so, she will make you go all the way to the Tartar Asuna uh, at the center of Kanazuka, and you will need to speak with someone named Xavier. This is Xavier. He will allow you to gain access inside to the Makage Furnace, uh, and if you guys try to come here on your own, it should be blocked off due to a barrier of some sorts. And once you get here, you will need to obtain three different keys to unlock a cage. While inside of the Tartar Asuna for the Makage Furnace, I do advise bringing a healer um, because you will be taking damage periodically over time. And I do have all three of the key locations marked. We have one right here, one right there, and one right here. The first key that I'm going to be showing off will be inside of a chest. All of these keys will be inside of a chest. The first one is on top of this roof. Uh, right in this location. So this is the viewpoint. This is what it looks like. I set up a waypoint just for easy access and I'll show it again on the map right here. The second key will be a little bit north of that. You have to grab one of these electro granas and head all the way over here where this barrier is. Walk very carefully down these steps and right between this crack right here should be another common chest with the key that you need. The last key is south, and we will be taking this teleport and heading north for easier access. So upon taking the teleport heading north, all we have to do is glide down, and right here where the broken bridge is, we stop ourselves. There should be a common chest right here, and grabbing it will give you the third and final key. None of these keys are in any specific order. You can get them as you want, but you do need all three keys to access uh, the certain area that you need to get to. And we're gonna head back to the center down here to show you where it is. Okay, after making it to the center, and if you look around to the west side, you should see a gate over here. And upon going up to the gate, it'll proc and say that you need at least three keys to gain access. So right here, this is on the west side. You'll need three keys to gain access. That was the gate right there. 
Entering in, there should be, I think, one luxurious chest, and then just opening up the luxurious chest will give you the blueprint for the four-star claymore. It's as simple as that. There might be a few enemies you have to kill after the fact. We're trying to ambush you, but it should be as simple as just get the three keys, open the gate, get the blueprint from the chest. Voila. Simple as that. All right, moving on to the third craftable weapon. This is going to be for the spear, which I think is another easy one that you guys can obtain. We're going to head over to uh, Yashiori Island, east of Fort Fujito. Um, at this little camp right here, there should be an NPC. I'm not sure what his name is, but he's going to ask you to go to these little mechanisms. There's three of them around the map, and then he wants you to try and um, break these orbs or these blue hydro spheres that are going on. So right here we have this shrine and there's two things that we need to put inside of it like some crystal or I think it's like a purple crystal and a purple sphere and orb. Uh, I don't know exactly where the two of them are. There's going to be two for each that I show you but there's going to be this mechanism right here and what you need to do is change the orientation and elevation of this so whenever you hit it once it'll shoot and fire and you can tell it's going all around the map like so and it'll fire into the hydro orb. So right now, if I hit this, you can tell that I have mine set up perfectly. It hits the Hydro Orb that would have been there. It should be there for you if you haven't done this yet. And you have to make sure that it goes through all the teleports or all of these uh, pillars that are set up. You can't try and cheese it and have this one shoot directly down. It must go through each and every one of them. But I believe that the sphere should be in the center right here that you can grab. And that the crystal should be down here. Somewhere in this corner. I think using elemental sight will bring you towards it. Yeah, this uh, crystal down here. Once you get both of those two pieces, you go back to the top, go to that shrine, and insert it. So this is the original, or this is the location that you will be inserting those two pieces that you acquire for completing the puzzle. I'll have it marked on the map right here if you guys want to mark it yourself. This is the initial starting quest that you need to do. Talk to the NPC, and then, th and then you go right here to start solving the puzzle. And this is number one. Number two will be directly north of the Formation Estate Domain. We head directly north. It'll be west of the Serpent's Head. This is the starting location with the correct elevation and orientation. As you can tell, it goes all the way around. And the final one will head it down to the center, which this is where the Hydro Sphere should be. And then you should be able to get that purple crystal or orb in the center. And I think the crystal is somewhere down in this cave. Okay, and the third and final location will be directly south of the Magu Kenki at the Jakotsu Mine. This is the initial starting point. You can use Ningguang to set it off and the correct orientation and elevation. So right there it fires, goes down, across, down there, across again, across, and that should finally set it to the center where the last hydro orb is at. I'm not too sure where the crystals and the spheres are on this one, but remember you do need to get those two pieces and insert them to the shrine in order to um, complete the quest. And after completing all three of these, there will be a continuation of the quest. And the man that you talk to will say that you need to head over to Fort Mume for the fourth and final puzzle. Okay, so now we are here at the fourth and final location, Fort Mume. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. These pillars, this is the starting point. It's just going to make you go all the way around. For the orientation elevation we can shoot it right there fire it off as you can tell the orb is going all the way around the entire map and then it'll head straight into the center where the hydro sphere should be the final one and this one should be a freebie i think the crystal orb that you need will be on top that you can grab and the uh the crystal itself should be like right here in this area and then you just go back up insert it and you should get the blueprint for the spear that's three down all right, this next quest that we're going to be doing will be for the four-star sword in the game. And I'm not sure if there is a specific quest you need to proc this. However, I do know that I went to Jinren Island. There was a guy trapped in a cage, and the key to the cage was up here in this tree. And I ended up letting him free. Again, I don't know if this is required to actually activate the quest and uh, continue on. But after doing so, and if this is not needed, there are four different slates on the map that you need to collect. And it'll bring you back to Jinren Island to find the treasure, which will be the four-star sword. So I'm going to show you guys where all four of these slate locations are. 
Okay, slate number one will be northeast of the Kamisato estate. It'll be right underneath this tent. Slate number two will be at Araumi, um, northwest of the Grand Narukami Shrine. And it's going to be down this wall. And now there is going to be these Kitsune statues, three of them, which you do need to use the memento lens on in order to gain access to the underground area. So if you guys haven't done that quest yet, you want to make sure you grab that uh, gadget. Go drop down. So after dropping down, we're going to head left over here. And there should be a hole here we can jump down. It's probably filled with water and you have to complete a few puzzles and quests in order to clear this area out so you can gain access here. You could probably also swim here as well because we are going to be going all the way to the top of these stairs. This is the mechanism to open up the gate on the other side. And right here in this dirt pile should have slate number two for you. So after grabbing that second slate and heading your way out here, the water should have retreated. So you should be able to walk down here. There should be another mechanism right here. You can activate, open up a pathway. And then at the end of this hallway, there should be a teleport waypoint, easier access into the underground area. So this is the waypoint here and Heading over to the left side, this wrecked ship going inside. There should be an investigation spot over here that gives you the third slate that you'll need. So this is where it is on the map located if you guys wanted to mark that down. Okay, the fourth and final slate south of Konda Village right here in between Biako Plain right next to the teleport. Behind this person's house to the wall, we want to drop down. Get our surroundings, go through this door, and start heading down. Once you've made yourself all the way down, there should be an access over here to the right. And I don't think you'll be able to gain access to this entirely, like right off the bat. You'll probably have to go through a certain uh, few puzzles, grab that Electro Gronum right there, and end up going through that barrier and finding a back way in or something. But in this room, when you do make it, it'll look like this. Two tables, uh, some chairs, a Kitsune statue, candles, and some boxes. I believe right here in this box should contain the fourth and final slate for you. If it's not in this box, then my memory is a little off and it's probably in that box or something. But it's in one of these two boxes. <laughs> the last fourth and final slate. After grabbing those, there will be a quest that procs back for you to go to Jinren Village or Island, talk to the man who you ended up freeing from that cage. I think it's the same person. And then the dialogue will just take you away. Follow all the steps, go through all the measures and keys and whatnot. And at the very end, the treasure will give you the four star sword. Okay, and now on to the fifth and final craftable weapon, the four star catalyst. Now, the quest that you need to th for this is purifying these uh, soccer trees around the map. And I think you get the quest from the Grand Narukami Shrine. I'm not too sure. But the lady that you speak with will want you to pur purify five of these around the map. The first one, which is probably the easiest one to get to, will be south of the Kamisato Estate. Right here, I have it marked. You can take the waypoint, head south, down here. It's just wide out in the open. And it looks something like this. You will see a diagram up here. And you have to match that diagram with these. There's always going to be one that has a one on it right there. So that's going to be the starting point. So if we take a look, this is the starting point, as you can tell. We need to make this go to these two. So we're going to want to put this as number two. That as number two. Which will reach out or reach out number one to the number two. As for these twos... We want this one to be three, so this line goes there, that line goes there, and that's connected. And then this line needs to go all the way to the right, so this one will be four, if you guys are following with what I'm putting down right here. So this is going to be one, the initial one that you can't change, two, two, three, and four. So let me see if I can get this set up for you guys. I have this set up as number four, as the fourth and final one. I'm going to head on up top, and I see these two. This one's number two that I'll have set. This one is not set to anything. We'll activate it. We'll change it to a number two, like I said before. It can't go number one. Only the only one can start off as number one. And then this one I said I wanted to be number three, right? So doing that and then heading back, you'll hit this up and start praying. It should look exactly like it does at the top and it'll summon an enemy. Upon defeating the enemy, 
will mean that you've purified at least one of the Sakura Tree roots that you needed to do out of the five. One quick uh, major detail I forgot to include is before you can start purifying and praying at those Sakura uh, trees, the roots, you need to grab a wording tool. And now there's going to be a unique wording tool for all five of these different locations. And to obtain them, they're going to be in various locations. I think this one for the Kamisato household is north of the Kamisato estate. And I think you need to use the memento lens on one of these Kitsune statues, like this one right here might be glowing, which will offer up a wording uh, tool for you to use. Normally, it'll always be accompanied by this big uh, Kitsune, which will give you the wording tool. Now, I, if I remember where these wording tools are off the top of my head, I'll let you guys know, but I might not remember. So I'll just give you guys the locations for these uh, Sakura tree roots that you need to purify. All right, location number two, we're going to go back to Araumi down in the wall. You guys need the memento lens anyways in order to open it with the three Kitsune statues right here. It'll grant you access, and this one is relatively easy. Boom. It is right there, the place that you need to be to purify. You grab one of these Electro Gronums, head all the way in here, and upon talking to the uh, bigger statue, should give you the correct wording tool that you need in order to purify this. Okay, the third location here is going to be south of Kanda Village, north of Biako Plain. I actually think that this will be the first location that you end up going to in order to purify. I think this is where you originally get the quest. And it'll send you down this wall right here. Upon going down, we're going to want to run all the way down this hallway as well. Making it, making it out to the end, we're going to want to go jump over here, grab the Electro Grottom, jump down, pass through this barrier. And this will give us access to the first location that we need in order to purify the Sakura Tree Roots. The fourth location will be all the way west of Chinju Forest along this path right here. We can see the Abyss Mage and the Slimes. You can see a little crack in the hole right here. It leads us to a cave. I'm going to try to ignore that Abyss Mage. And this will be the fourth Sakura Tree Root that you need to purify. Okay, the fifth and final location northeast of the Kamisato Estate. You can take the Wave Rider to get over here to this island. Or you can swim if you have Ayaka. There's going to be a Katsune statue right here, a smaller one. And you can use your Memento Lens to gain access to this. And upon dropping down and just heading all the way through the linear path set up for you. And here it is. Electro Granum down here to protect yourself from the Bale Thunder. The correct order as well. And now after gaining or after purifying all five of the Sakura Tree Roots, I think there will be a quest that procs you to go back to the Grand Narukami Shrine. And they want you to go down to the center of this area right here. The barrier should be broken. You should be able to gain access to this. Just an update on the map. It is right here. So there should be a quest that procs the Grand Narukami Shrine. It'll make us drop down. And once you make it all the way down here, the rest should be self-explanatory. Uh, just follow your quest item. It's going to make you go through a different series of uh, puzzles, I think, and different little patterns that you have to solve on the fly while monsters keep coming at you. And the Electro or the Bale of Thunder is strong, so you want to make sure you keep summoning these Electro Granums to protect you from that. Bring a healer with you so you don't end up dying. Um, and then at the very end, there will be a mask. There will be a mask that goes into your inventory, and you can use it. And by using this mask, it will give you the blueprint that you need in order to craft the final catalyst, the Hakushin Ring. Now, most people, fair warning, chose not to actually use this mask because they want it as a uh, souvenir or something, right? Something to... Uh, just, just a souvenir. They wanted it. They didn't want to use it. So keep that in mind before you end up crafting the catalyst. Because once it's gone, it is gone. It's not coming back. But I ended up using mine. I have the Catalyst because um, I do think it will be useful for my Lisa. But that was it. That was all of the four-star craftable weapons. Uh, I think ranked from the easiest to the hardest. This one is probably the most difficult one because you have to go and purify. Uh, I do think the easiest one is the bow. You just have to wait. The, cat the Claymore is definitely easy. You just need three keys and that's it. Nothing else in the middle. 
But yeah, if you guys did find this video helpful or informative, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm in terms of showing this video to other people and helping the channel grow. Consider subscribing as well if you want to catch more guides and uploads like this. Spiral Abyss is about to reset August 1st. It's going to be a whole new setup for Floor 9 through 12. So I'll be doing guides on those characters or on those floors with these seven characters. So if you guys are interested in seeing Spiral Abyss get, this get taken down with just these seven characters right here that everyone has, then I will be doing that. And I will be using my craftable weapons, my blacksmith weapons. So I'm leveling up this new spear that I got from the quest for Shang Ling. It has elemental mastery because I don't have a dragon's bane. And I'm most likely going to be leveling up this Hakushin ring for my Lisa because I think it's, it might be best in slot for her currently out of all the ones that I uh, have at my disposal. But yeah, if you guys are looking forward to that, remember, um, feel free to subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this video did help any of you guys. Let me know if it did. And I will catch you guys in the next upload.